gets uh, gets us back on. Hey, Lee, I have a problem. What's up? I didn't buy enough beer. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I said uh, your problem. Yeah. I already <laughs> slept over to the bodega to get some for you. <laughs> okay, so my my brother, he is father-in-law brought him some moonshine. Nasty oh, stuff. Uh, but he left it over here and he and I had some and honestly um, turpentine probably tastes a little uh, bit better. Did you like the tiki torches with that stuff? My God. Nice. So I dumped it out to uh, how's my basil? Basil. Basil. Thank you. And uh, there are chunks of charred wood in the bottom. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, the uh, the charcoal is there to help uh, take the edge off of it. <laughs> I swear, I don't. I I just read this. I've never sure, done it. Sure, you know. Sure, I'm just saying. Okay. I went to college in Eastern Kentucky, so I'm just saying that's it. <laughs> I don't know anything. All right. So so far, what I've got is a tray full of prepped chopped items here. Uh, we like our basil leaves whole as opposed to chopped up. Uh, all the Roman tomatoes are cut into slices and the cheese is just cut into little half wedges also. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm going to change my camera to the counter camera here and we're going to start to prep the dough and start to work with the dough, alright? So, let me give one last wipe down here real quick. If you're going to roll pizza dough out on your counter, make sure the counter is clean, by all means, if, if you don't mind. Just a little safety tip. A little safety tip? <laughs> well, yeah, and guests may frown on any kind of you know, residual yeah. food particle. Right. I'm just well, saying. Well, the okay. recommend you not roll pizza dough on raw chicken counters. No. Oh. Yes, that's, yes, definitely. Okay, okay. so... Let me get this centered in just right here. Lovely. There we go. All right. So I just took a handful of uh, flour, knocked it out onto the counter. I'm going to pull the dough out of the KitchenAid and just use a spoon to get it out of here. Yep, this is good TV right here. You guys are looking at flour doing crap all on the counter. No, it's very good. <laughs> because I can pull my hand here. Until he starts getting a razor and chopping it up. I'm waving. <laughs> All right. And here we come with the dough right there. Excellent. That's what I refer to as the dough ball. And that's what most people refer to. Because that. I'm very technical in the kitchen. Okay. So your standard kneading process for uh, any kind of dough is just simply bring it in a ball right here with your heel, push across the counter, and the then pull it back towards hand. you. Heel of your hand. Okay, Not good point. Not the heel of your foot. All right. Rotating 90 degrees and just repeat. Just like that. Roll it. Do it again. All right. So once we've got a fairly good, firm ball here, um, we're going to get this divided up and then make some pizza um, pizza crust out of it. Real quick break for questions while that's sitting there. Anybody have anything? Cam, do you have any questions in chat on Hangout Party? Uh -huh. Yes, it was. the ice cream, it? Okay. Oh, that was me trying to do it slowly, trust me. Yeah. Any slower and the crust will rise out from underneath me. Okay, so let me adjust my camera one more time, right about there. Perfect. Okay, Does so... Does anybody in your uh, plus two school have a question? I don't know. Does anybody in the school that's in the Hangout have a question? No? Nope. Okay. All right. So, say again? I said you're such a thorough teacher. Everybody's good. <laughs> or they're asleep, comatose, one of the two. 
maybe the alcohol is kicking in. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just hyped up on ice cream. You guys are the one drinking over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're going to be doing at this point is we're just taking a bench knife, and we're going to chop this into three roughly equal size pizza pieces. If you want to get a scale out and weigh them, you're certainly welcome to. And then we're going to roll them into a ball. Now the process for this is just leave the dough fixed in one hand, and then with your other hand, you're going to roll it in just like that. So that you've got like a belly button on one end of it, and a nice round skin on the other side. All right? And we're just going to, going to keep working this in. What you're doing is building up surface tension here on the outer edges. Pinch this in the back so that it all comes together and then set it aside. Do that for all three pieces. All right? So again, just pinch in towards the center. I'm going to go nice and slow here. There we go. And then pinch the bottom off. Honestly, if you want to know how to work with uh, work dough and make uh, buns or baguettes or anything, one Saturday, just get you a batch of dough and just play with it. You're never going to make anything. It's never going to hit the interior of an oven. Just practice your shaping. Practice your techniques. Uh, also, I'm going to recommend, uh, look on King Arthur Flowers' website. They have a lot of good instructional videos for shaping rolls, shaping uh, baguettes, uh, loaves, stuff like that by hand. So you have artisan bread. They have a lot of good uh, tutorials for doing that. Yeah. Um, I will also recommend King Arthur. Now, one of the things we don't do on the cooking show is we're, we're not going to, you know, take money for, for advertisements or anything like that. However, oh, them, then. however, I will tell you for a fact, the King Arthur newsletter is useful. They don't just try selling you stuff. They also show you how to do things. So I would strongly recommend it. Okay. Now that you've got your dough ball out here, partitioned out, however big you want, this is probably, I'm going to say, 10 to 12 ounces all total. Just going to hit it with a rolling pin and want to get it into the basic round flat shape that we're looking for. I don't know how everybody's rolling skills are, but you do this often enough and you get pretty good at it. Say again. What was the name of the dough that you said again? Is it Cain Arthur? King Arthur? King Arthur. King Arthur. Okay. Yeah, think of a, like a scalibur. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Nice to the round table. What, what better product placement? These people should send me free dough right now, okay? And while Lee is rolling his, I'm going to hand toss mine. Okay. I'm going to just click the camera over so that I can watch Eric hand toss his. You always got to go one bigger than me, don't you, buddy? No. I like, uh, I like my crust a little bit thicker. Honestly, I don't know. Eric, do you know where they're from? I'm sorry. No, I know where what? Do you know where King Arthur is from? The... Vermont. Uh, someplace in Europe, Excalibur. I think it's actually kind of a fairy tale. I think you probably need to go back to throwing dough. Oh, no. Doesn't it say on the back of your uh, package, made in... <laughs> okay, so for those who want to hand toss your pizza, um, here's what you want to do. Do the same uh, every step until he makes a, you know, makes a, a round. Looks like this guy here. From there, you're going to press it out, and then you're just going to kind of grab it and stretch it and move it in a circle until you get something that's a little bitter, bigger than a, eh, say, like, what's that, nine inches, thereabouts. Then take it, make sure you flour the back of your hand, take it, and toss it. When you toss it, you're going to bring your hand up, have the dough resting on this part here, and you're going to like flick your hand. So like flick it like this, and it's going to spin it up. And then catch it. That's important. 
if it starts getting like uneven, because even I'm not perfect, unfortunately. Hey, and that's recorded. How about that? Uh, mm -hmm. Grab it and kind of stretch it out in the angle that it's not round. So if you got like a triangle shape or who knows, trapezoid, whatever, stretch it out so you have a more of a round piece of dough. Okay, and I don't know if you can see this, but in bread making, not really, there's something called the window pane effect, or window pane test. What you do is you stretch your bread out, and you kind of to tell if uh, everything is going along as it's supposed to, you actually get to a point where it stretches out really, really thin. You can almost see through it, like, like a membrane. And that's called the window pane test. When it's got that, stay, stays itself together, not rips apart, uh, you know your bread is uh, ready to go. Or dough, rather. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to switch back over to, well, I'm still on my uh, counter cam here. All right, at this point, what I've done is I've got the disc of pizza dough. I've put it on a piece of parchment paper. Uh, again, we've used parchment paper here before. We did it, uh, Ali, what was that, three weeks, two yeah. weeks ago? Uh, just about three. Yeah, about three weeks ago for yeah. fish. Uh, get parchment paper, either a roll from the grocery store or any kitchen supply house will have these square flat sheets. Uh, it's indispensable in the kitchen. It really, truly is. Okay, and there's two different types on that. You have the rolls, which I hate. I mistakenly bought those the first time. They, like, bind up on itself. It's horrible to work with. Use the sheets, like he's saying. He's just yeah. sheet. Remember, sheets. Sheets make your life a lot better. All right, what I basically do is I've got a pastry brush. I put a little bit of sauce out onto the dough. Uh, with this particular pizza, you don't want it heavily, heavily sauced. This isn't a Sicilian style. So spread your dough, your sauce out. Get out to the edges here. And just about like that. There we go. Now. We're going to come back with the toppings, and I'm going to lay toppings out on this, and then it goes into the oven. Okay. I love my favorite part, toppings. Hey, I'm going to jump in real quick. Yeah, go, go for it, Eric. Um, if you don't have parchment paper, uh, you can use flour on a stone. Uh, you're going to want a pizza stone to cook this on, um, or if you don't have that. You can use a, uh, a baking tray. Depending on what you use, it's going to determine the outcome of how your pizza cooks at the end. Uh, I use a pizza stone, and I use a pizza peel, and I use cornmeal. And I just uh, spread some cornmeal on my pizza peel. Um, actually, same brand that I got the uh, flour from. Spread a little bit on there, and your pizza will slide right off onto a pizza stone. Uh, yeah. You want something on there, flour, cornmeal, even if you're using just a baking sheet to make your pizza, something between the dough and the uh, baking sheet. Because it, you know, it doesn't matter how non-stick it is, it might not be as right. non-stick as you For the hope. love of God, you don't want this sticking. Yeah, that would be a big disappointment to everybody. It's a disaster. It's a pizza disaster. I'm just saying. And then we put our, our leads on hold just like this. Exactly. They're basil. The basil leaves. We're loading it up. Because for Pete's sake, it's a basil pizza. And let's put one more right in here. Very nice. All right. And that's the pizza before it goes into the oven. Uh, a little bit washed out. Sorry about that. We're still, still working on all of the camera crap around here. Uh, Eric, show us your pizza. What does it look like? Um... Dough and sauce? Hold on. Oh, my God. Really? Come on, dude. You're running behind. Daria's got ice cream waiting for us. Way to make pizza instead of whatever you got over there. Uh, every five seconds, I'm getting a text from Daria. When's it my turn? When's it my turn? I don't know. You're such a liar. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys, he's a cook, but he's a <laughs> I'm loving the guy. <laughs> okay, I, I had I never get to know the real thing. Like, uh, he's like, he's like the master chef guy. He's like mean inside. I can't believe. It. <laughs> <laughs> I right. got your 
back, Doria. All I'm right. over here throwing things. I, Trust me. I better, in the interest of my own safety and health and well-being, I better say <laughs> Doria has not been pestering me. She's been a complete sweetheart the whole time. Okay. Let's see how this for uh, me and showing colors. Oh, that looks beautiful, too. Wow. Mm. There you go. Wow. Hey, look at that lean knot washed out. I like this. You really, yeah, this camera is uh, going to be good for you. Yummy. Uh, but, you know, we just don't have an air time. I'm using a Logitech 525 HD camera. It really works rather well. I think. And here's mine right here. Gorgeous. Ready to go? Mm. All right. These things are going in the oven, and the house is getting ready to smell like old Italy. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, normally at this point, I would go ahead and get all the flour off my jacket. Sorry about that. Uh, normally at this point, I would start working on the second pizza, but we're going to actually turn this over to Daria while I make that. So, Daria, you have some ice cream for us, hon. Yeah, I do. So I think I've been showing everybody. Where's my spoon? Here we go. What it's going to look like. Um, okay. So this is my... Vegan, amazing, delicious ice cream. Yeah, I got to not drip on my keyboard. Um, really, 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 really good. And if you guys want, I'll show you how to make it. It's really fast and really easy. Um, okay, so, like I said, there's no dairy, there's no sugar, there's no gluten, there's no eggs. There's like nothing that you think you need for ice cream. And um, and I'm just, I've gotten really into really lately, but I love chocolate and I love ice cream and it's so good. So all you need to do is in your blender, you're going to, I'm teaching a cooking show. I can't believe this is really fun. Um, so, you're, you're doing great, Daria. You're doing great. Woo! Okay, thank you. So you want coconut milk? I have your back, sister. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, girl. Okay, so you're going to have some coconut milk. This is my favorite brand because it's really creamy. Um, and so we're going to put that in, the whole can, into your blender, and this is actually, it's really cool because this is like an ancient Mayan superfood because we're doing cacao ice cream, and cacao is loaded with antioxidants, and it's, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Chocolat, they talk about it in that, it's, it's like the ancient Mayan recipe, I know, I love that movie. It's like one of my only four or five chick flicks that I really do do. Okay, that's Johnny Depp hot. Movie. I know, yeah, seriously. It's Shut up food, already. It's a food flick. It's not a chick flick. So, no, it's the Johnny Depp hot movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> totally, totally. And chocolate, the important part. So, uh, and then Johnny Depp and chocolate. So, so, you can make this and feel like you're there. Actually, a couple of times I've done this and I've put some ground up um, cayenne in it, which makes it like the spicy chocolate that she makes in the movie, which is really cool because the ice cream cools your tongue off, but then it's spicy. And he dug it big time. That's yeah. on death. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you did a can of coconut saying. milk into the blender. Then you're going to do rice milk. And we're going to do, what did I say? Two and a half cups of this. Do so one and two and a half cups of rice milk. Then we have raw cashews. Mm. And, yeah, and they're unsalted. And I think these, these kind of give it body, and I think they help the creaminess and stuff, so we're going to do half a cup of raw cashews. I believe Johnny Depp likes those, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're just saying. I would start to be getting worried if I were you, Lee. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> don't worry, honey. <laughs> um, I can only do so much, Daria, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then the thing that makes it sweet without the sugar is dates. And I always used to think dates were super gross because they're ridiculously sweet. But then mm. I discovered that when you're eating raw and you're eating vegan, dates are the perfect thing to make stuff sweet because they, you can't really taste them. Except well, you who doesn't love a good date, Daria? I know, right? Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so I do about eight. So like one, two... Three, four, five, six. These are pitted. Make sure you de-pit them if yours aren't de-pitted. Um, throw a few extra in there. You know. Like that, yeah. And you can 
really, I taste test a lot as I go. Like this is going to be sort of your ice cream batter once you buzz it up. And definitely taste it and see if you want you want more chocolate or you want it sweeter. I really like bitter, dark chocolate. I really love chocolate. Mm. So you can make it more like chocolatey if you put it in less. Um, okay, so I did my dates. I did my stuff. Now we're going to do, I just need a tablespoon, and you're going to do your cacao powder. Um, cacao. Yeah, cacao. And so this is the Mayan superfood awesomeness. Which is actually, it's chocolate, but it's not processed, it's not messed with, so it's actually really healthy for you. It's got like more antioxidants in it than blueberries. So, Doria, is that what we call a Mayan kapow? Sure. Call it a Mayan kapow. Okay, I like that. I definitely need a better title for it. Absolutely, sister. So, I like it really healthy, so I do like. How many did I do? I do like six really heaping tablespoons of this. Of course you do. Awesome. So one. Of course you do. Two. How expensive is that cacao powder? For um, how expensive? It's like four bucks. It's not bad. Oh, really? Is that true? My mom's over here. She's telling me four. She went to the grocery store for me earlier. I, I you have to go to the organic section to find it. Yeah. Or like I, I ran over to Whole Foods. I don't. I, I go to Trader Joe's for most stuff, but I don't think they have the cacao powder there, so you can just run into a health food store or into Whole Foods to grab the cacao. And, um, yeah, it's not that bad. So then you do this, then if you want to give it a little in depth of the flavor, just do some vanilla. Just if you're going for the non-sugar thing like me, because I haven't had sugar in three months, so I'm afraid if I go anywhere near it, my head's going to explode, uh, just make sure your vanilla doesn't have sugar in it. And I just, I just pour a bunch of vanilla in. And then I usually do a little bit of cinnamon too to make bring out that kind of Mayan yeah. thing. And then you're just gonna buzz this up. So watch that. I'm gonna buzz it. And so I would buzz it for a lot longer. Um, make sure that all, all of this stuff gets really, really mixed up so that your ice cream doesn't come out grainy. And um, then you're going to taste it and see if you like the flavor. So like mine could use, I went overboard on the cacao. So mine's going to need more dates. So I pop some more dates in. So you just taste it and figure it out as you go. And you buzz that up. And then you're just going to need to get an ice cream maker. I know most of you don't have one, but I swear they're not expensive. This one back here, I don't know if you guys can see it, is um, the Cuisinart. And it was maybe like 50 bucks. Um, and so there's a freezer bowl inside, and you just put that in the freezer overnight. And then you can make your ice cream whenever you want. And so what happens is you turn this on like that. Except like mine's already done, so it's not spinning. And you pour this right into the ice cream maker. You just like that and just pour it in Ooh. and you leave it spinning and then you can just look right inside the top is open and um, actually if you want to add nuts or something like halfway through once it starts getting coagulated then you can throw some nuts in or chocolate chips if you guys Daria, are you don't yeah. want to say add nuts we live in New York <laughs> <laughs> I'm just girl saying. you're crazy you crazy no, I'm just <laughs> saying. you don't know what I gotta put up with Daria City yeah, help shot, lady. I don't know what's going on with you. I'm right, but I'm just saying. Disembodied voice. That's nuts to anything in New York. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. Okay. I know, I'm just away. saying. So, um, so then you just let it, you just let it spin for about 20 minutes, and it comes out like this. Excellent. And that's so, what can you pull out your bowl, the frozen bowl, and show yeah. us the interior there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me, hey, how's your pizza? It's out. I'm waiting for Daria to finish, and then I'm going to show the pizza and oh, cut the sucker. This is a freezer bowl. Oh, Daria, I All right. And look at how much you ate there, mm. sister. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You're going to have a... I've been waiting for an hour. Is there any left? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot left, but because yeah, you guys are all coming over, right? We Absolutely. are. We'll be there in just a minute. All of you. All of you. Okay. Everybody's over. Okay, so this is what I just pulled out of the oven a minute ago, right here, and the last two treatments, as soon as this comes out of the oven, what you want to do is get a bottle of EVO, extra virgin olive oil, and you just want to drizzle a little bit on there, and then you want to hit it with kosher salt. 
Because we're very international. <laughs> Coaching. And once you have that done, um, somebody hit my pizza cutter for me. Well, yeah, I did. Where, where is it? It's in the second drawer there. There it is. <laughs> I hit it so it's not to ask me. <laughs> I feel needed. <laughs> okay. Here's mine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're not far away. We can come over there and help you if you want us to. And mm -hmm. be here in an hour, man. Definitely. Oh, that sounds like a blast. It really does. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm working on a slice here. This is uh, Margarita Pizza. A little bit of history. This is the classic Italian colors, red, white, and green. Uh, the story goes that this was designed by a local Italian um, in, I think, Naples for the Princess Margarita as a celebration of her coming through on a, a tour. Um, obviously, I'll have to look that up a little bit more. That is so sweet. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Mm. We could ask Joey Bag of Donuts across the street yeah. from us. <laughs> All right. So, any questions? <laughs> Bindic is hungry. I wish you were here, man. You could totally join in on this. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I ate before I got here, so I'm, I'm good. Excellent. So, so two things. First, is there anybody in the Hangout who has any questions that they want to throw on for what's going on here? I, no? missed, the, I missed the last part on the ice cream. Oh, yeah. What's the question? Um, I got disconnected right in between. Um, <laughs> Where did you leave off? After you added the, the – it sounded like you were saying – Cacao powder, but I know it's cacao. Yeah, it's cacao, yeah. What it what cacao is? It's just chocolate before all the you know like factories. It's just it's cacao powder. Okay. Cacao. This is my favorite. Here, wait, where is it? Like there. That guy. Cacao. Cacao. Okay. Oh, so I should be able to find that here in Peru pretty easy. Yeah, any like health food store or Whole Foods definitely has it. I can't well, remember Trader Joe's has it, but not a lot of health food stores, but. Where are you? The markets in Lima, yeah. Peru. Oh, wow. Oh, well, then you won't have any trouble finding but, Yeah, so it should be easy to find. Yeah. I didn't know you were saying cacao either. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yes, That's I'm okay. Saying, I'm saying cacao powder there. And so, yeah, it was cacao powder. I think um, we're, Cam is going to put the ingredients up. And I put the ingredients up on my G Plus page, so you can go there and check it out. Okay, cool. Cacao powder. It was date. The big sticky ones, the medjool dates. Damn. <laughs> um, Cashews, hmm? raw, raw cashews, don't get salted, that would be gross, um, and mm -hmm. rice milk, like. and somebody questioned me about whether or not this had sugar in it on one of my streams, and I double checked it, totally done, and, um, and then the cocoa milk, did I pause, sorry, you got me, okay, here, and then the uh, milk coconut milk, hard to come by. can I substitute soy milk? Yeah, you can. Oh, am I frozen? Sorry. Am I frozen? Okay. Nope, um, you okay, good. Um, yeah, you can use soy. I stay away from soy because I, I was telling people earlier, I was doing this really interesting um, like health cleanse thing. And soy is actually a, sort of not as good for you as you think it is, so I, I've been staying away from soy. Um, but you can totally use soy if you like it, totally. No biggie. I don't have a lot of options. Is the yeah, I don't know for it. Here. It's definitely better. Better than cow's milk, for sure. Yeah. Just definitely go for you like the flavor of. You could do almond milk, too, like any kind of nut milk, anything you like. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then once, you're, once you have your batter, once you buzz this up really well, you taste test it and, and make sure you got the flavor that you like. You can add more cacao powder or it's if you want it sweeter or um, like we were talking about earlier, if you want to go full on chocolate, Johnny Depp. What I do is um, you take some crushed red pepper 
And you can put it in like a coffee grinder and buzz it up so it's really, really fine. And then you can toss that in there and you get spicy chocolate, like Mayan spicy chocolate ice cream, which is really cool. And um, yeah, and that's, that's the whole thing. That sounds good. I would make that, but I would, I think I'd add more cow so it's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> pretty successful. Daria, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Um, thank you. I really loved having you on. We really did. Thank you. I loved being here. It was so yeah. much fun. Had a good time. Eric, uh, glad to see you've got technical difficulties worked out. We look forward to seeing you on the Hangouts much more often coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cam, thank you for streaming all this. And for everybody else, thanks for joining in. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You did a good job. All right. All right, Daria. See you later. Remember, I got your back. Oh, thank you. You. And I'm sorry I didn't have my guitar with me, but um, I'm definitely coming with uh, another hangout concert coming up soon. All right, and, and um, back next time, all right, yeah. sister? Okay, yeah. Dario, what I was talking about the other day, seriously, you and I should get together and we should just do a cooking and music hangout and, you know, face-to-face yeah. -face and let everybody join. It'll be a blast. That would be rocking. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? If people wanted me to sing just a tiny little something real quick, um, yes, you inspired me with your Italian, with your Italian story. Here, I can I can show you guys a little side of me, a little secret side of me that you wouldn't see in the hangout. Um, when I was in high school, I studied four years of opera, and um, I did most Italian opera. And actually, Italy is the only place that I've gotten to go outside the country, um, outside the U.S. so far to sing. And um, so I could do a little tiny piece of an Italian aria for you if you want for the pizza eating. <laughs> Go for it. attention to G plus, um, G plus 15 school.com. Uh, we've got a calendar up there. Uh, Eric is going to be taking over some of the cooking schools and I'm definitely going to be around. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us and, um, and keep an eye on little Miss Daria. <laughs> She's the most candy she is. Daria loved having you on. Thanks guys. See you. It was fun. All right. Everybody have a good evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye. Nice meeting you, Daria. Bye, guys. Bye. I'll see Bye. you on my page. I'll see you guys later. Definitely come join me so okay. I can play a concert. Try to get some sleep. <laughs> I know, right? I seriously have to. You guys are too much fun for me to sleep. Uh, All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. You're geniuses. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.